Okay, let me read the question for you. Uh, the receipt in payment account that is cash work for Brown Lane Rovers Football Club for the year ended 30th June was as follows. Uh, we have a cash book given. Balance brought down is basically a bank balance. If it's coming on the debit side, it's a bank balance, and if it's coming on the credit side, means it is a it is a bank overdraft. But in this question, it is on the debit side 4543, means it is balance at bank. Now this is the receipt side. Uh, how much money we have received and from whom? We have received money from subscriptions. What are subscriptions? The club provides facility to its members, and that facility. Uh, for that facility, club charges some sort of fees. Although it's not very high fees, it's in nominal terms. So, in order to maintain the operations of the club, uh, in this case, we are a football club. So, we teach people, we teach uh, guys or girls maybe how to play football. Okay. So, in order to teach them, we have to provide them some uh, infrastructure, some environment. And for that, we charge us fees so that we can cover for our expenses. These are called subscriptions. Then we have sale of old kits and equipment. We have sold non-current assets, match day revenue. Now, in order to earn some uh, revenue, in order to raise some finance for the club, we uh, also uh, arrange some sort of events. And in this case, the event is matches. There can be matches, there can be concerts, there can be exhibitions. Okay, so there can be donations. So in this case, we have match day revenue. We have uh, arranged some matches for which we have earned some revenue one two double three. That is a sale of tickets, and for matches we have also incurred some of the expenses. Now, what we'll be doing will be uh, make, netting both of these figures. That is, we'll be deducting expenses from revenue in order to uh, calculate profit or loss from matches. As you can see, we have uh, received less from the matches, but we have incurred more expenses. So therefore, there is a net loss in conducting the matches. So why are we are netting both of these figures? We are netting these both of figures in order to understand, in order to give the idea to the management. So whether this match activity was beneficial in terms of financial, uh, whether it was viable or not. As you can see, it is not viable because uh, incur a, a, a if this didn't sort of uh, these sort of events are not useful in terms of financial grounds okay then we have donation income donation my dear students can be of two types it can be of revenue nature and it can be of capital nature uh, if it's not written anything in the question donation is always the revenue in nature and donation if it's a revenue received it is recorded in an income statement and in this uh, question in income statement is represented by uh, in a club accounts income and expenditure account okay so it will be charged it will be recorded in an income and expenditure account but if the donation the examiner specifically mentions that donation is of capital nature if the donation is of capital nature then this donation is charged basically this is recorded in basically in an uh, in a balance sheet statement of financial position but as you can see in this question, it's not mentioned anything. These uh, small amounts of donation are revenue in nature and these are all recorded in income and expenditure. Then we have sale of refreshments. What is refreshment? Uh, in uh, most of the uh, not-for-profit organization, almost all of them, there is one cafe. It's known as cafe or cafeteria or canteen or it uh, uses the word refreshment. So what we need to do, we need to calculate a separate income statement for refreshment. So in this case also we need to calculate income statement for refreshment. Then what else do we have? We have match expenses. Uh, we have already discussed what does match expenses represent sir. Uh, then we have bought new kits and equipment. These are non-current assets. Then there are general expenses. We have purchased some of the refreshment means. We have to pay, we have paid our suppliers. Then there are ground man wages. Simple wages for the club, then it's balance CD. If the balance CD is coming on the credit side, the balance PD would come on the debit side. Okay, if the balance brought down is it is the important one and not the balance carried down. So, if you can see, if you make this balance brought down, it will come on the debit side. Okay, then there are some additional information as well. 
In addition, information on 1st July it is the opening balance and on 13th June it is the closing balance. So the opening balance as you can see subscriptions paid in advance. Now if we have, if our uh, members have paid a subscription more than that they owe to us then the extra amount that we have received is basically subscription prepaid or also known as subscription in advance. So this, so this subscription in advance is basically a liability for the business. At the start of the year we do not have an advance but at the end of the year we do have. Then we have subscription in areas. Uh, areas mean my dear students that our members have used the services for our club but have not paid for the subscription. Therefore it is an asset for the business. It is same as that the, the, you have received the charan from school and you have attended the classes. Uh, and even if you have not attended the classes, the time has passed by, the month has gone, but you have still not paid your chara. Uh, for that, this is still the uh, receivable for the school, okay? This is a current asset for the business. Subscription in area. Then we have an opening and closing inventory. Then we have creditors, that is trade payable for refreshment, opening and closing. We have gifts and equipment and valuation. If the, if the examiner mentions the word valuation, this means we have to use uh, evaluation method for non-current assets. Okay. Then in note 2 we have uh, gifts and equipment sold during the year which are valued at 12.30 on 1st July. Uh, so the gifts and equipment that we sold during the year which had a value of 12.30 and we sold it for how much? We sold it for 1008. So as you can see we have sold it for more than its uh, sorry less than its book value. If we have sold uh, for less than book value, this means the difference between 12.30 and 1008 would be lost on the score. But if we would have sold for maybe 1500, that is more than its net book value, then the difference would be gain on the score. Okay, so this was basically the question, and now let us move to the requirement. So the first requirement that we have, we need to calculate the depreciation on kits and equipment. If there is no data given, if there is no instruction given in the question regarding the method that we need to use for depreciation, we will always be using a revaluation method, okay. For the straight line method, we must have been given the rate or the life and for reducing balance as well, we must have the rate of depreciation. If we are not being given the rate or life, then we will be using a revaluation method. Now let us uh, go for the solution. So in order to calculate uh, depreciation using revaluation method, there are basically two ways to do that. And first way is to make a T account for, uh, in this question we have kits and equipment, we need to make a T account for kits and equipment and the account is known as net book value account. So as you may be aware that kits and equipment is a non-current asset for the business and the nature of the asset is debit. So the balance brought down will always come on the debit side. So beta, the balance brought down for non-current asset would come on the debit side. If the balance VD is coming on the debit side, then the balance carried down should come on the credit side. Now whenever we buy a new non-current asset, the entry is equipment account debit and bank or the liability account would be credited. So we have bought it through bank, so we will be using the entry uh, equipment debit and bank credit. Now if we have sold any existing equipment, this will be transferred to the disposal account. The entry would be equipment account would be credited and disposal account would be debited. Now the value that has dropped during the year, value that has reduced during the year for equipment would be charged to income statement and this is basically depreciation. Okay, we need to calculate depreciation. So let us see the values on 1st July. As you can see, we have kits and equipment that have value of 5000 at start of the year. And at the end of the year, the kits and equipment that we are left with are 8104. This is closing value. Now, as you can see in a cash book known as the receipt and payment account, we have bought new kits and equipment worth 4656. So whenever we buy non-current asset entry would be non-current asset debit and bank would be credit. And in disposal we will be using the net book value. 
uh, as you can see in note 2 we have sold kids recruitment that were valued at 1230 so the net book value is what we will be using in this account because it is a revaluation method now if you can see if you can solve the question and solve the account the thing that is missing is depreciation and will be charged to income statement as you can see it is a non current asset asset is always a uh, debit in nature so the greater side would be debit side if we use the debit side on both of the sides okay 9656 is the greater side the shorter side is basically the income statement that is depreciation okay this was basically depreciation using revaluation method now we have uh, an alternate method for that as well if you we need to calculate depreciation without making a d account the formula for revaluation method is also written in an alternate format and this uh, is the method that i prefer you to use in an examination question if the examiner does not ask for a d account although it's not uh, not normally asked examiner does not normally go for a d account uh, examiner normally asks for you to calculate the depreciation now it's totally up to you that how you calculate that depreciation the formula is opening plus addition minus disposal minus closing now as you can see in a t account we are also doing the same thing this is the opening value balance meeting this is addition and then minus disposal because it is on the credit side we are deducting it and then closing will also on the credit side as you can solve this also opening value is given in the question as well and it's given here also then we will be looking at the question therefore we do not need to make this t account then addition is given in a cash book as you can see we have bought new non current asset worth 4656 we have sold existing asset that had a net book value of 1230 at the end of the year there are still assets left for 8104 so if we add up both of these two and if we deduct both of these the balance that we are left with is depreciation as you can see the answer is the same so i guess this method is better it's easy and it will take less space in an examination question so i recommend you using this working for evaluation method even if the examiner does not ask for depreciation in, in a club accounts question and in a single entry as well because this club accounts is basically made in single entry principles okay so whether it's single entry or whether it's club accounts it means the same thing if the examiner does not ask you will always go for this method. then the second requirement that we have in this question is we need to calculate profit or loss of the sale of equipment so these students how to calculate gain or loss on disposal there is a basically a format for that and the format is first of all we will be starting with the cost cost is the original value that we paid for when we bought the asset then we will need to deduct accumulated depreciation from it also known as provision for depreciation the, the value that we have is net book value and we will be deducting uh, sales proceeds that how much for we have sold the asset and the difference would be gain or loss if we have sold uh, it on more than net book value, difference would be gain and if we have sold for less than book value, the difference would be lost. Now as you can see in this question, we are not being given with the cost or accumulated depreciation of the equipment. But the thing that we have been provided is net book value. If we already have the net book value, then we do not need a cost and accumulated depreciation. Okay? Uh, but if we have not given the net book value, will be detecting accumulated depreciation from the cost in order to arrive the figure for net book value. So the equipment that we sold for, uh, sold uh, had a net book value of 1230 and we have sold it for 1008. As you can see, we have sold it for less than our book value, so the difference would be gain. Sorry, difference would be loss. If we have sold it for more than net book value, the difference would be gain. And uh, maybe for example, we have sold it for 1300. So the difference seventy dollar would be gain. Now you can also remember like that that uh, if this is coming on the debit, if this is positive value, this means it is a loss because the loss has a debit nature. And if this figure is coming in negative, so therefore gain is always negative in nature. Okay, gain is negative, gain is credit, income is credit, and loss or expense is debit. Okay. Why is income credit? Because it increases our capital. If the capital is credit, therefore gain and profit are also credit. So this was basically the second requirement we have found out 
how to calculate gain or loss on this board. Then the third thing that we are required to make in this same question, we need to make a subscription account and we need to calculate subscription. The question specifically asks to prepare the subscription account. If you have not been asked to prepare a subscription account, you can do alternate working as well. But in this question, we need to make a subscription account. Now what is subscription? We have already discussed earlier that subscription is basically what we do charge from our uh, members in this case. Okay, What we do charge from our members is subscription basically. Now uh, subscription is basically income for the business. Uh, in order to calculate an income account, we need to make a T account and the mnemonic for income that we will be using is A, P, P and A. Accrued, prepaid, prepaid and accrued. Just need to remember that uh, A, P, P, A is just a mnemonic so that we know that where we should uh, need to put the opening and closing balances for approvals and prepaid. This opening accrual is basically balance brought down and this is balance carried down. So this opening prepaid is uh, balance brought down for prepaid and this is for balance carried down. So in an examination question we won't be writing accrual or prepaid. Instead we will be writing uh, balance brought down and balance carried down. So in this case I have just written accrued and prepaid. So in order for you to remember it and uh, I have written it with a pencil and then I will be erasing it. Then whenever we receive subscription from members the entry would be bank account would be debited and subscription account would be credited. Now at the end of the year uh, although the subscriptions are credit in nature what we will be doing will be debiting subscription account that is reversing it closing the account and transferring it to income statement and in this case we won't be using an income statement in a club accounts instead we will be using income and expenditure ok income and expenditure now as you can see in the question there are two columns for one for 1st July and another one for 30th June 1st July is basically opening balances and 30th June are basically closing balances now as you can see my dear students Subscription paid in advance is basically prepaid. Okay, so there is no opening prepaid, but there is a closing prepaid for 540. And as you can see, there is a cash book also made in the question. In a cash book, we have uh, subscriptions that we have received. As you can see on the debit side, the subscription that we have received are 7200. So the entry that we would be making was bank account would be debited and subscription account would be credited. Now at the start of the year there are no subscriptions in advance but at the end of the year there are subscription worth 540. So instead of writing prepaid I have used balance carry down. Now uh, if you talk about accrued subscription at the start of the year we have accrued subscription that is areas we have accrued of 240 we will be writing balance bd 240 but at the end of the year we do not have any subscription so there are basically no balance carried down so i am also putting in the dates the dates are required and they fetch one mark at least in an examination question so if we solve for this the bigger side is basically credit side in this question so I will be using the greater value on both of the sides and the shorter side would be income and expenditure. So out of the 7200 if I deduct both of these values I will be getting income and expenditure value that is 6420. So this balance carried down becomes balance brought down at the start of the new period, new accounting period and after 30 June there would be 1st July 2013. The year would not change, the year would definitely change in 1st January. So if there is no balance carried down here, there won't be balance brought down either. So this was my dear students income next, uh, sorry subscription account. Subscription account is basically made in order to find out income and expenditure value. This means in this year we have earned 6420 in terms of subscription income. Now after we are done with the C requirement, let us move to the next requirement that is D part. In a D part, we are being asked to prepare a refreshment income statement. Now at the start of the lecture, we have studied
that there are two types of income statements in a not-for-profit in a club account. And what are these two types? The first type is we need to calculate, we need to prepare an income statement for refreshment. Either the examiner will use the word refreshment or it will use the word cafe or cafeteria or maybe candy. So all of these are basically the same thing. Okay. So first of all, what we need to do, we need to find, we need to make an income statement for canteen. So how can we make an income statement for canteen? Just like making a simple income statement that we used to do in your commercial business, uh, normal sole trader question, normal income statement, the format is sales, then we have written inward, uh, normally return inward, return outward, these things are not given in a canteen. Because as you may be aware, if you buy something from canteen, maybe a burger, uh, the, the canteen guy never returns for it, okay? The food items are non-returnable, non-exchangeable. So therefore, there are no return inward, outward, normally in this lesson. Uh, sales, less cost of sales, opening inventory, add purchases, then closing inventory becomes cost of sales, sales minus cost of sale, gross profit. Now, as you can see in the question, uh, there is a cash book given with the name of receipt and payment account or, and on the debit side there is sale of refreshment. If there is no receivable, although normally there is no receivable here because uh, you cannot buy a McDonald's burger on credit. Okay, So McDonald's or similar canteens or food joints, they do not have any trade receivables. Although they have trade tables, they buy their uh, ingredients, this stuff on credit, but they always sell the uh, food items on cash only. Okay, therefore there is no credit sales in this question, uh, in this type of question. There is sales and it is all on cash and we have an opening inventory as you can see on 1st July we have inventory worth 250. Then we have purchases. Purchases, we need to find these purchases. Why? Because as you can see in note number 1, there are creditors. Creditors are basically trade payable also known as accrued. Because if there are accrued given in an examination question, you always need to adjust these accrued. How can we find purchase? First of all, we will go for the bank figure. As you can see in a receiving payment account on the credit side, we have purchase of refreshment. Although the purchase is given, but it needs to be adjusted for accruals and prepayments. Uh, although there are no prepaid here, but there are accrued here and the creditors are accrued in this case and as you may be aware, at the end of the year, the accrued is always plus, okay? At the end of the year, accrued is always added. So if accrued is added at the end of the year, accrued will be deducted at the start of the year. So what I will be doing, I will be adding up closing accrued and I will be deducting opening accrued in order to find purchases, okay? So this is basically purchase. So, if you have problem understanding this, what you need to do, you need to make a PLC. PLC is basically a creditor account. Oh, so, creditor is a liability for the business. So opening liability, my dear students, would come on the credit side and closing liability would come on the debit side. If you purchase from our suppliers, the entry would be purchase account would be debited and liability account would be credited. This is basically a liability account. And if you pay, pay to our suppliers, our liability would be reduced, liability would be debited and bank would be credited. Now at the start of the year, we have purchases of 1034. As you can see, creditors at the end of the year, we have a figure of 1140. Purchases are not there and the bank is given. As you can see in a bank account, the sheet and payment account, we have purchase of refreshment 207. This is basically payment to supply. So we can find a purchases simply by totaling this. The greater side would be debit side and if the debit side is kept on both of the side, the shorter side would be purchased. So as you can see in this uh, requirement as well, we have done the same thing. What we have done, we have started with bank and we have added up the closing accrued and we have deducted the opening accrued because, because it is on the opposite side in order to find this purchase figure. Then uh, moving on to the closing inventory, closing inventory is given. As you can see in note number 1, closing rent is there. So opening ad purchase less closing is cost of sale. And if we deduct sales from cost of sale, we will be getting gross profit. So although you can charge any expenses that we have for, any expenses that we have for refreshment. But in this question, as you can see, there are no 
adjustments relating to refreshment. There are no adjustment relating to refreshment. Because if there would have been any refreshment, the examiner must have uh, told us that these are expenses relating to refreshment. And if there are no expenses that are tagged as refreshment expenses, maybe refreshment wages and uh, refreshment related depreciation. So what we'll be doing, uh, instead of writing gross profit here, we'll be writing profit from refreshment. Okay, because this is no longer a gross profit. This is a net profit relating to refreshment. So if there would have been any expenses relating to refreshment, we must uh, charge in here in order to find profit from the refreshment. And if there are no expenses, this gross profit will become profit from a refreshment. Now let us move to the last part of the question. We need to calculate, we need to make an income and expenditure account. Now how can we calculate income and expenditure account? My dear student, income and expenditure account is basically the real income statement for any club, okay? So the main income statement for any club and societies is income and expenditure account. And as the name suggests, income and expenditure, there are basically only two headings in an income and expenditure. One is for income and another one is for expenditure. There are only two headings. Uh, so there are no sales, no return involved, no cost of sale, no opening, closing inventory, nothing would come here. Only there will be two headings, one is income and one is expenditure. So as you remember from your earlier studies, this format we used to make when we, whenever we make, we need to make a service business income statement. So whenever we are making an income statement for a service business, maybe for a doctor or a lawyer or a dry cleaning business or an ad agency, we will be using this format for a school, for a college or for a hospital. If we are making income statement, this is a format. Now, what are the source of income for this Brown Rover Football Club? First of all, we will be writing profit from sale of refreshment. As you may be aware that in the D part, we have already done with calculating profit from refreshment. If you have already calculated profit from refreshment, we will be putting it up here, this figure. And if you have already inserted profit from refreshment figure here, we do not need to write any other figure relating to refreshment. We do not need to write sales, purchase, opening, closing inventory, expenses relating to refreshment because these are already adjusted and this is the final figure that we are getting from refreshment. If there would have been a loss from refreshment, instead of writing it in an income category, we will be writing it in an expenditure category if there was a loss from refreshment. Now what other source of income do Brown Loan, Brown Lane Club has other than refreshment? Other than refreshment, we have subscription income. My dear students, we have already done with making a subscription account earlier in C part and this is the value that will be taking it from the subscription account and will be putting it in an income and expenditure account that is 6420, okay? We will be putting it in an income and expenditure account that is 6420. Subscription income. What other incomes do we have? We have donation income. We have already studied there are two types of donation. One is revenue in nature, uh, revenue received and one is capital received. And if the examiner does not mention which is it, which of both of these, the, then we will always consider it as a revenue received and we will be charging it to income and expenditure. But if the examiner specifically asks that it is a, a mention that it is a capital received, then therefore we will be charging it to our balance sheet. We will be adding up all of these incomes and what about the expenditure? Now the expenditure should be any expenditure other than refreshment because the refreshment expenditure have already been charged to the club. Loss from matches. How can we calculate gain or loss from matches? As you can see in the cash book, there are two items. One is match their revenue that is 1, 2, 3, 3 and one is match expenses. So as you can see my dear students, revenue is less and the expenditure for conducting those matches is greater. So the difference will be negative. If, if it is negative, this means it is an overall loss from matches. And if it was an overall uh, revenue, that is profit from match, we would have uh, shown it in the income category. But the important thing is that, that we cannot split these two values and we uh, record income 1, 2, double, 3 at the uh, uh, top part and 3680 will be charging it in an expenditure part. Although the, uh, the final answer will be the same, but we would not have uh, have this information. We need to find out 
whether this uh, conducting these matches was success in terms of financial, in terms of numbers, or it was a failure for the business, failure for the not for profit organization. Okay, then we have other expenses such as general expenses, these are also I'm taking it from a D account that is a student payment account. Then we have government wages. Then we have a depreciation. As you remember, my dear students. And in the A part, we have already done with calculating depreciation and that was 322, okay. If the examiner would not have uh, been asked for this A part, but still we need to get, make this calculation in order to find this depreciation that is 322, okay. So this is basically depreciation. This will be charged in an income expenditure account. As you can find, any other expense? There is another expense named with the name of loss or disposal. If there was a gain or disposal, this would come in an income side. And if there is a loss or disposal of non current asset, it would come on the expense side. Okay. So if we add up all of the incomes and if we deduct it from all of the expenses, as you can see, the incomes are basically 12,060 and the expenses are total in total as how much are their expenses? Our expenses are 11,844. Income is greater and the expenses are less. So the final answer would be positive and if it is a positive, we will be writing a surplus and if it is a negative, we will be writing deficit. So my dear students, uh, in an income expenditure account, we never write profit or loss. Instead of profit, we use the word surplus or we can write surplus of income or expenditure or in, uh, we can also write in short as surplus or surplus for the year and in order to report the loss we will be writing deficit instead of loss we will be writing deficit and instead of profit we will be writing surplus so I, I hope my dear students you were able to understand the concepts behind not for profit or club accounts